Hey, I'm Bobby Briggs, webmaster of Bobby Horror Fan, and today I am promising you a discussion on Phantasm 1979. This movie changed the landscape of films forever. This was one of the first B movies, other than Halloween, to make quite a splash. Uh, it, it escaped uh, X rating, not to outdate myself. I mean, I was a little little type then. Uh, movies back then did not have NC-17, like my generation calls it. They were called triple X or X movies. And this movie it narrowly escaped it from the death scenes in the mortuary with the sphere and him peeing on the floor as he was being drilled and the graveyard sex. Uh, there's a villain in this movie called the Tall Man. He comes to this really, really farmy looking town. Two brothers and an ice cream vendor are occupying this town, just growing up in the age of Rolling Stones, weed, and playing guitar out in the sun, and, and drinking some Jack Daniels, and just minding their own business. And this man comes in and shakes up the town. And he brings a slew of all kinds of hellish imagery with him ranging from the Jawas from Star Wars yes those little hooded things and they make the <laughs> kind of noise and the lady in lavender the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life Kathy Lester who's now known as Cat Lester she's a, a lounge singer does quite quite well for herself actually and I think she was in some playboys in the early mid 70s and then she was cast in phantasm she was quite a beautiful woman and she still is to this day and she did an appearance in the new phantasm phantasm ravager we got our wish we wanted a lady in lavender back and there she is playing with reggie's head in the middle of the mortuary uh the spheres come out and then the little drill i just love that I just love how the blood goes out into the open, and we see uh, we see a lot of spheres killing people in part five. I'm not giving it away, just in case you haven't seen Ravager, but the first movie had the most infamous one with the uh, Undertaker coming out, and he grabs Mike, and Mike <coughs> bites his arm, and the sphere comes out and, and drills him, and that's when he pees on the floor, and, you know... The tall man goes and chases Mike. He slams the door. Here comes the yellow blood. He takes his little pocket knife and goes all over on, on these four fingers, and all four of them fall, get chopped right off, and all the mustard hits the wall. This is a typical B movie, and I never heard of it until 1988. I was sitting in my room. This is when my mother and father started to allow us to have TVs in the room, and we were being like everybody else. I was, I was actually in my twins' room at this time. I changed rooms a couple times because, like, when my older brother moved out, I moved into his room, and you know, I so I occupied all three rooms. My first room was next to my parents, and then I moved to my twins' room. We put the TV in there, and one night I'm sitting there staying up, and I got all my homework done, and there's. Phantasm, and I was watching it on Creature Features, and I wanted to go see it in the movie, so me and a couple friends from school got together. We went to Bradley's uh, Plaza, which is now torn down, and now Staples stands there, and uh, we went to go see Phantasm 2, which was a very high-budget movie compared to Phantasm from 1979. Everybody had forgotten about this movie until 1988 came around, and... Mike and Reggie were the two main characters other than the tall man. I think I think the movie uh, company decided one of them had to go. Poor Mike was picked instead of Reggie, thank God, because Reggie became the heart and soul of the series. Uh, when Mike was cut, A. Michael Baldwin was not playing the role. It was a choice between James Lee Grow or Lee Gross, I don't know how to say his name. Uh, he was in uh, a lot of movies like Psycho. He was the car salesman and, you know, the Psycho remake. Uh, Jason Gadrick from Iron Eagle and Brad Pitt 
those three were the main ones. And I think there was a rumor somewhere, too. Somebody in the studio even eyed Ralph Macchio. That would have been interesting. Uh, Brad Pitt was actually picked, but something happened. That, so then James Legro became the next person to be Mike. And that's who played Mike in part two. Part two had the gore and the slice and dice of the spheres and the Jawas. And then, you know, there was no Lady in Lavender, but, you know, there was a couple pretty girls like Samantha Phillips and Paula, Paula at Irving. She was in uh, Santa Barbara, the soap opera. Samantha Phillips, I don't know what she was in, but, it, you know, she's one of those faces that you know and you know her from somewhere. Uh, she... She was good. I like the end when she rips her hair and you see all the brains and she laughs at Reggie. She's like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, my God. And she scratches his face up again. Reggie is the poor guy. Every movie, he it looked like he was dead at the end. They actually did all these little cliffhangers. Part one, the Lady Lavender stabs him in the stomach. Her face turns into the tall man and he's looking at like he's dying and he's look, seeing before his eyes that this pretty pretty beautiful woman is now turning into an old man and then the second movie he's all cut up and he comes up to uh mike and uh paula irving in the movie and they're looking at him like reggie reggie and mike says it's finally over or something and the the window goes down in in the hearse and the tall man goes, it'll never be over. Never. <clears throat> and then they all fall out of the window. So then you're left to think of Mike's uh, Mike's fate and Reggie's fate in that movie. Part two ended with that. Part three ended with everybody's, you know, fighting the tall man. All of a sudden the balls come out, the spheres, and you see Reggie pinned up up against a corner. And it kind of looks like that he's getting, you know, drilled everywhere. Well, part four rolls around. He gets dropped down onto the floor. And the tall man goes, I have plans for you later. So, my poor Reggie. I mean, I will not give part five away, Ravager. But his, 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 his fate is sealed in part five. That's all I'll say. Uh, Phantasm is quite a series like every movie delivered in a different way part four was the weakest i thought there was not much to say about part four it was all a bunch of flashbacks and there was a couple little scary things there was the scene where the the hot girl picks reggie up and you know they go to stay at the hotel and you see her boobs moving he takes the shirt off and the spheres are coming right out of her that was a classic scene. That was the best scene in that whole movie. And part five was a lot more post-apocalyptic. That's all I'll say about part five. Just in case nobody has seen it yet. See it. It's well worth the viewing. Uh, a lot of people online will say it sucked. It was the worst one. Do not listen to it. Form your own opinion, and I'd say watch it. There's a lot of things in part five that came out last year that we wanted to see 20 years ago. And, you know, it kind of answers all the questions. All right, well, good night, and I hope you enjoyed Phantasm. My next thing is going to be a surprise, so stay tuned.